Hey, what's up guys, Hobson Plays here, and welcome back to some more Minecraft Bedrock, where we're trying to get all the achievements for the Xbox One. I hope everyone is doing well, having a fantastic day. Uh, looking outside my window right now, it's snowing pretty heavily, so a uh, perfect day for playing some Minecraft. In today's video, I want to be working on a furnace array. Uh, I have a little area set up for where I want to put it. Uh, it's a pretty big furnace array. It's going to be a little bit of a big project. Um, mainly I need a shitload of glass and the best way to get a shitload of glass is to have a shitload of furnaces. So uh, that's the project today is getting a furnace array set up. This is going to be where it's going to be um, positioned just inside uh, our little bunker down here. Now I do need to gather a few more resources. Uh, to be honest, I don't have a perfect design yet for this. Uh, I've actually been working on a tutorial for this, but I'm not satisfied with how it's been turning out. Uh, so I definitely have a little bit of testing to do in this world here. I'll use this survivor world as a guinea pig for my tutorial in the future. Uh, but for now, uh, like I said, I do need to get a bunch of furnaces and a few more supplies. So let me gather up a bit of stuff and we'll see what we can start building here. What do I need? Do I need? How the fuck do I make an observer? Ooh, hoppers. It's hoppers. All right, so I got a bunch of supplies now. Not very sure if it's uh, exactly what I need, but for now, I'm just gonna start digging out uh, roughly enough space for actually building this. Um, I need to go down. If you see here, this is eight blocks, eight furnaces wide. Uh, it's gonna be a square of furnaces. So it's gonna be eight furnaces across and eight furnaces down. So I gotta dig down go down eight furnaces worth, I guess, of space, as well as eight more back across. So I got a little bit of digging to do. Let me uh, start digging out of space here. I should have brought some wood for ladders, maybe. That would have been handy. But anyways, for now, uh, let me dig, and I'll see you in a second. You may notice I'm not using a uh, Silk Touch pickaxe. That's because I actually am out of cobblestone. I don't have enough cobblestone of all resources to make enough furnaces for this. Uh, maybe on the list of things to add is a cobblestone generator just for purposes like this. And plus, who doesn't like more farms? All right, so I have all my furnaces in place here. As you can see, it's uh, eight by eight, like I was saying. So that's a total of 32 furnaces. So I can smelt 32, I guess, items pretty basically at once. Um, now, what I'm going to do here, kind of what I mean by an array is actually... There's only going to be one input for the items to smelt and only one output for the items to come out of. So what I need to do now is build a what they call a piston feed tape where it's a bunch of pistons all triggered in time so that it actually rotates this in a circular pattern. And like I said, I have one chest up top for where I input all my items. And then there's going to be a chest. I think I'm going to have it come out the bottom here where all of the items get output. So as these uh, furnaces go around in a circle, uh, they just get um, triggered by a single hopper uh, inputting or outputting items. So uh, yeah, let me build up a little bit of the piston arrangements and uh, then I got to work on a little bit of timings as well which I'm not like I said I'm not sure if I have the right supplies for this or not uh, my tutorial didn't work out so good so I'm still kind of making this shit up as I go along all right so I have my pistons in place here uh, really simply how this works I'm going to trigger this sticky piston right here which is going to push this furnace right here on top of the piston right here then this observer here is going to trigger this piston pretty much at the same time. And it's going to push this whole stack of pistons or furnaces up. Then I have pistons in each of the four corners. Well, the remaining three corners, I guess. And it's pretty much the same thing. There's going to be observers there that react to this row of furnaces being pushed. It's going to push the top row over. Then it's going to push this bottom row, this side row down. Then it's going to push this back over this way. And... Kind of the whole cycle repeats itself. I'm going to add some timings to that, but just to show you how this works, I'm just going to push the button here. You can see everything is back actually in place. Uh, I can push this again and again. You can see it kind of glitches out. The texture becomes white. It's kind of a bug for Bedrock, of course. There's a few bugs in Bedrock, as always. But yeah, as you can see, this works pretty well. Uh, so now I just got to build up a clock for some of the timings so that it automatically does this uh, whenever I put items in. All right, so I think I got a decent clock set up here. Uh, this is the same clock that I've been using forever. Uh, just a little square here of repeaters set to, on this case, a three tick delay. Um, so these cobblestone blocks right here set up the actual timer. 
And right here I have a comparator set up. So whenever there's an item being in this hopper, oh, in the, oh my God, come on. I, what? So whenever there's an item in this specific hopper right here going into this chest, um, the clock will continue to tick. So let me just show you here. I'll put a few items in that hopper. And as long as there is a item in that hopper, it's gonna continue to keep this piston extended. So the clock will continue. Um, and just in case that an item just starts to go in there, uh, it's gonna send a trigger through this uh, observer right here, which is actually gonna send the original pulse through. And then yeah, as long as there's an item in there, that piston's gonna stay extended. And you can see now that there's no item in there anymore. Maybe I can show you, maybe. Now there's no item in there. Uh, the comparator realizes, oh, there's nothing here. So it retracts this piston right here and the clock doesn't continue anymore. Now the last thing to do is to set up the inputs for all of the coal, as well as the actual whatever item I'm gonna be smelting. And then this is where my tutorial kind of has been falling apart is setting up a fail safe so that as long as you have items in the chest being put into the furnaces, the machine is gonna continue to run. Um, but I also need to make sure because I have a specific amount of furnaces here, um, you have to actually do some math, but I'll explain that later as to how many items you can input at a single time. Um, so yeah, I've been trying to work on a fail safe so that if you put the wrong amount of items in, or if you, uh, maybe you put in your coal in a weird way and you have to go take it out of the furnaces for some reason, uh, the machine isn't going to start up when you don't want it to. But uh, let me work on that for a little bit and I'll explain the solution that I came up with when uh, I come back. Okay, well, I can't say I did a great job of getting this to work. I actually haven't even tested this yet. I thought I would do this on camera so you can laugh at me when it fails. Uh, so I just wanna show you starting from the front face here. Uh, this is our inputs for actually going into the furnaces. So in this chest here, we would put what we want to get smelted down. Uh, the reason why it's a double chest, I'll show you why in a second and you would put your fuel source over here. Uh, in this particular instance, it has to be coal or charcoal, uh, just the way, uh, you know, eight by four here is 32. And uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, you need to have specific uh, numbers of fuel to go in there and it has to be coal or charcoal. Uh, now, okay, in the back here, it's where it gets kind of disgusting. Um, so up here, we have a bunch of double chests. So this is the input chest here. It gets separated again by these hoppers here and split up into these double chests right here. So that way we have four uh, hoppers going into the chests. So that way you get four items being inputted at a single time. My apologies for my terrible grammar. Inputted, I'm pretty sure is not a real word. Over here is where the input for the fuel source is. So that's the chest right there. And same thing, it goes to the back of the um, furnace. That's how they get loaded into the furnaces. Um, so now there's a few things going on here. Firstly, there is these redstone lines going into the hoppers on either side. Um, there's actually one, this block right here is being powered as, so that way when a hopper is being powered, items cannot be actually passed through there. They won't go to their next destination. So you can see here, I put items in this hopper, but they should be going in that um, furnace, but obviously they're not because they're being powered. Therefore, they're not actually being turned on. Now, the reason why I have it set up like that is because of our timer that we have downstairs, where just like with the um, timer for turning the furnaces and making it actually move around, the same signal here is being sent up to those hoppers so that every time a furnace moves, an item will be input into that furnace. So when the furnace moves, this power system gets here, gets turned off. Therefore, this hopper here that has an item in it from our chest right here actually gets unpowered and puts an item into the furnace. Then it quickly turns back on again so that no more items get put in. So therefore, we get one item per kind of pulse from our timer. So that way we don't overload the system too fast. And then again, the furnace gets pushed, it cycles again, and the item gets put into the next furnace. Uh, it's kind of complicated. Uh, it'd be easier if it wasn't in this gross fucking cave, but that's why I was working on a tutorial. But again, it didn't work out quite the way I wanted to. But for my survival needs, I don't actually give a shit if it looks good or not. I just need it to work. Which speaking of, it doesn't look good, but it works. This is what, the failsafe I was talking about a little bit. Um, 
it's yeah it's not the best thing i've ever designed and it's probably not even going to be that uh fail safe uh i guess if that's a verb um but um so yeah what i have now is these comparators right here this one here and this one down here are going to be reading the signal from this hopper as well as this chest right here um you have to make sure that you have items in this chest and in this hopper before the system will actually turn on so if there is items in the chest and hopper here this piston is going to get pushed over and a signal is going to be coming from this block as well here and it's going to get sent down the line right here this redstone line all the way down here which is going to turn on this timer and just like if there's items being input here it's going to continue the clock uh turning so i haven't tried this yet we're going to try it right now i genuinely have no idea if it's going to work properly it's going to work for sure but i don't know if it's going to work 100 percent properly um, so like i was saying before you do need to kind of do some math for this now you have to put in a minimum of 32 coal which i have here it has to be numbers divisible by 32 so you can do 32 64 128 whatever but for every 32 pieces of coal, you need four stacks, four full stacks of whatever smeltable block you're going to be smelting. Uh, you do have to do all of the same block. You can't do a mix of cobblestone and sand or sand and smooth stone, whatever. It has to be all the same block. So that's kind of the, you know, negative sides of this farm. But it's going to be super freaking fast. And yeah, let's see if it works. And uh, I'm crossing my fingers for sure. So anyways... I'll show you here what's happening. So this chest here now is full, well, it's getting filled, and it's going to be separated into these hoppers down here, actually more specifically into these chests here. I can't open it because there's a block there, but uh, that's fine. So you see this comparator here is being powered. Therefore, that means there is items in this chest. Therefore, the system can turn on. Now, same thing right here. There's no coal in here. So this system, is, my fail safe here, is being activated. So therefore... I'm not sending a pulse down there, but if I throw in some coal, like so, it is actually going to turn on, and hopefully, yeah, I see and hear movement. Hopefully, it all turns on. Now, the scary part about this is um, I can't turn it off, so if there's any problems, which I already see a problem here, um, you know, I can't, I can't do anything about it, which I see now what my issue is already, so that is a big problem. I think what's happening here is these two hoppers are being powered at the same time. And I think for some reason it's missing loading. Yeah, it's putting two in one furnace and yep, there's the break already. So, uh, well, the worst part about this is now I have to take all the items out of these furnaces. So I'm going to give this a few minutes to actually smelt down some of those items and yeah i'll be back all right so i did a little bit of a change up here in the back um, i'm taking now a signal instead of from the timer i'm actually taking a signal from the observer that is powering this piston over in this corner so whenever the array itself shifts it takes a signal again from this piston here and that's what's unpowering all of our hoppers so i did a test here with just coal and it worked so let's do a test now with coal and uh, i'm out of sand so we're gonna have to uh improvise i'm gonna use some stone hopefully after all of this goes through i'm gonna have a couple stacks of smooth stone smelted up um for now though let's go ahead and let's see if this works by putting stuff just straight into this chest here uh, i have it set up so there's kind of a delay when uh Oh, maybe that's not working. Why isn't that working? Oh, there's not enough signal, not enough power. That's okay. Um, just for testing purposes, I don't care if my failsafe works at all right now. So technically, this is going to work. So if I put a redstone here, it's going to send a signal. Like I was saying, I have a delay here. So uh, as you put in blocks, it doesn't immediately start up. It gets uh, a few seconds for it to uh, start putting items into the system. So hopefully there should be four, nice, and a coal, four, and a coal. Awesome. If this works, I'm going to be very happy and probably never come back down here again. I really would like to get out of this cave. 
So as long as there's four in every single one of these and they light up, I guess at that original uh, spot at the first hopper there that it goes to, uh, I'm happy with this. Uh, so far so good. Okay, oh, well, there's five in there, six. Okay, why? Okay, so I'm pretty sure that I saw things that would indicate that this wasn't working properly, but all of these are perfectly empty, at least so far. I'm pretty sure I've gone through a whole cycle, so why don't we turn this off? Because it's annoying. And I'm going to go downstairs here, and let's just take a gander and see. In our output chest, this chest down here, oh god, this again. There should be four full stacks of smooth stone. Okay, well, so this seems to have worked. Um, do I test it again? Okay, the real test is actually putting a full eight stacks in, so let's do that and hope for the best. Because uh, quite frankly, if it can't handle this, then this whole system is worthless. You know, I'm thinking just for simplicity's sake, because this is just my own machine for my own personal use, I might just have an on-off switch. Forget all this fail-safe nonsense, because this is just... I don't think it's actually working, but we'll see what happens. All right, so the system's about to start up, I think. Nope, it's not. All right, it is going. I'm going to make sure that it continues to go. I don't want it to stop. Now, just please frickin' work. I just, I don't want to not it work. All right, so far so good. All right, so now there should be actually extra items in there. Yeah, nice. So there's been a second coal added. I don't know what the number is supposed to be in here, but let's see what happens. As long as I get, what was that, eight stacks of smooth stone? I don't give a shit. So our first empty uh, thing is coming. Still needs to be output, but that's just fine. Um, there's no extra things to be smelted down. There's no coal remaining. There's just a whole bunch of extra, just a single extra um, output item. So I'll chalk this up as an absolute win. All right, so now the only thing that I really want to work on is getting it so that as long as there's something to be output, um, it's going to continue to trigger, which seems to be the case. I'm not exact. I'm not a hundred percent sure how, uh, what the best way to do this is. I thought about adding just an extension, like a timer extension so that basically once the machine turns on, you know, actually, I guess rather once the machine would turn itself off, it runs for an extra, I don't know, like whole cycle, which I'd have to time out to know exactly how long, uh, a whole cycle is but um damn i think i think this is working um obviously it's pretty ugly i'm gonna have to definitely uh make it look a little nicer down in here plus i've got a bunch of garbage still left over but um yeah i'm gonna chalk this up as a win i think this is uh, a working a working um furnace array um i'm gonna work on in between episodes here getting it so it's a little bit better as far as, you know, automatically turning on, automatically turning off, I think uh, if you're going to build a machine, you want it to do pretty much all the work for you. You don't really want to have to uh, touch it, set it and forget it. But anyways, guys, that is where I'm going to end this episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe so you can get updates on further videos that I'm going to be uh, releasing. I have an interesting video for next week, just more of a even more personal project than uh, I guess just playing video games is. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.